Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, this is still Tuesday, September 8th, and it's like 5.29 p.m. Okay, I got this email from one of our sisters in Christ who uh, does a lot of research on things to check them out to make sure they're okay or not okay or whatever. And I want to read this to you and I'll keep it anonymous. It says, please go to the 3 minute 50 seconds mark. That's what she means. What is that multicolored prism pyramid shaped light? Which I took a snapshot of and I will use it as my custom thumbprint so you all have seen it and she says I just spent an hour checking them out I guess she means those prism lights because I had never seen them before I see worldwide international prosperity based speaking things into being and more new age okay um, she's saying I'm just sharing for carefulness dot 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 at his desk beside it the bookcase is all his books set up so all can see and no other channels but his own on YouTube well a big preacher like that probably wouldn't be subscribing to anybody else you know he's just on there to share what he preaches anyway she says and he reminds me of cat care with pink hair or maybe it's cat Kerr, k-e-r-r -R, with pink hair that Jesus told her to make pink do you believe that? I don't believe that for a minute. That is sensationalism. And her explanations of trips to heaven with roller coasters, etc., etc., etc. And Jesse's mega church. Yeah, the famous ones that preached on TV or still do, they all have mega churches. All purple church things. Just sharing for prayer and consideration. Yeah, I, Jesse had said in that video series I shared with you that he loved purple. And he wanted a purple Maserati or something. And, or maybe that was someone else. Yeah, I think that was someone else. Never mind. Scratch that. But he, but he does love purple. Purple is the color of royalty. You know, uh, well, let me finish this sentence. Or she says, just sharing for prayer and consideration. They make it hard to know for sure. Just caution. And uh, then she goes on to talk about the smoke out there and how terrible it is and really bad for people with respiratory conditions and how hot it is on top of it. Anyway, um, I did not share his videos with you all. To get you turned on to listening to him. I figured. I knew he was a prosperity gospel preacher. And that's this message. That I have a link for. Which I will put in case you want to go. To the 3 minute 50 second mark. And see. This image. If you can't. Get it back when you back up the channel. I don't know if you can still see it. But you see it when it's like on the side. Whatever somebody's custom thumbnail print is. That's, that's what you see before you see the video. 
and it is like a, a triangle. I mean, you, the lights come down and go up or go up, whichever it is, and they go to a point. I would imagine they come from two light sources at the bottom and go up and come to a point. So whether you call it a triangle or a pyramid, um, I don't know. It, you know, that is kind of... I can see where somebody would find that very cautionary. But I did not share the videos with you to get you hooked on Jesse Duplantis. Um, I do not believe God told him he had to buy, he needed to buy a fourth jet. That's been not that long ago. And so he told his congregation, you all know I have, a, you know, he told us in the one I shared how he has a relationship with the Lord. He talks to the Lord and the Lord talks back and, well, does he? Is he a big liar? Um, if any of you listened to those, you may not have because you already know he's a prosperity preacher and he's all about making more money and... You know, how do you think that makes the poor people in the congregation feel when they go there week after week and donate all they can afford because he tells them the more you give, the more you'll get or what, however he words it. I've heard it put that way. That you can't outgive God. And all they're doing is falling farther and farther behind with faith that God's going to come through with that for them. And they have faith that God's going to move that mountain and give the husband that job he's been looking for to make twice or three times what he's making. And it never happens. Because why? Where is their heart in it? Why are they praying? Why are they believing that and praying for a job that makes two or three times more money? Because this, this preacher, him and several, are saying, because God means for you to have more here. You can listen to just a few minutes of it past that three minute, 50 second mark is what I did. I listened to a few minutes. And you can hear him say, uh, do you think it's the Lord's will for you to live in a mobile home? Not that I'm putting down anybody who has to, but do you think it's his will? We know that the Bible says that let your will be done on earth. And everybody says, as it is in heaven. And he says, you're not going to find any trailers in heaven. What will we live in? He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Oh, in my father's house are many mansions. There's only one word for mansions. It's what? Big. You know, and it's like, when you listen to him, it's like a talent that he's got a talent for drawing you in to listen to this. And for, it is not God's will for some of us. In fact, I have gone from being a nurse in a lovely home. I wouldn't call it a mansion, not even close. <clears throat> but it was big to me. It was bigger than anything I lived in. Well, that one house we lived in was pretty big. It was a very old house. Well, we have 12 kids, you know, in our family. But still, there were two sets of bunk beds in one bedroom. There was three boys in the attic. Three girls in one room. 
I mean, I'm trying to think. Where were the baby boys? I can't even rem Oh, the baby boys. Yeah, the younger boys. They were in, on the two sets of bunk beds in the one bedroom. So despite the fact that there was master bedroom and bath downstairs, three bedrooms and a bath on the second floor, and one huge bedroom and a small bedroom on the third floor, still we had to bunk up. I mean, it was nowhere near mansion either. And the house that my second husband and I were blessed with, it was a miracled kind of thing. Lease to own. And every dollar we paid every month to lease it was going to go to the down payment. So we were like, not just paying rent, we were putting money in toward the down payment. So when we went to apply for the loan, it was $7,200 down. We were paying $600 a month, which is what we were paying for rent and got a 2,600 square foot house with 16 closets. And one, two, three bedrooms on the top floor. It was a third, three level brick split level. It was just a, it, it was a miracle. It was a gift from God and I loved it too much. He lost his job about six, seven years later and we lost the house. Well, we decided to sell it instead of trying to struggle with payments and all and I thought, later that was so stupid anyway the point is talking about what God intends for us to have on earth he could have give it, gotten my husband another job so we could have stayed there he didn't want us to stay there I was always decorating he was always working in the yard. I mean, it was just, it was our idol. We needed to lose it. We are not to love the things of this earth. We are not to love the things of this earth. Our goal is not to get rich so we can say, God blessed us with this huge house. Ain't God good. Look what we got. Well, now I'm in a studio. I've gone down, down, down. More or less. Uh, the other houses, they weren't bad. They weren't bad. But they weren't like that one. One was a rental. It was an old Victorian. It was big, too plenty of room for the kids but it, it was it was a one year thing and then we bought a house and it was pretty not it was nice very nice i liked it wasn't as big but it was plenty big the thing of it is it was never quite like that one and then it was rent and then rental and divorce move again and move again and move into a mobile home Lord allowed me to buy a mobile home and from there it was smaller rentals and now I'm in a studio and I love it because my mind is not even on how big or how little I'm very satisfied and my mind is on heaven and those uh, videos I shared from Jesse Duplantis was to get your mind on heavenly things. We can dwell on he whatever is good, whatever is holy, whatever is lovely. Think on these things. I'll find that scripture and put it in the description box. 
And of course, our mind should be most of all on Jesus being there. And Father. And if, if he lied about what he saw that he went to heaven, if that really didn't happen, but it causes you to dwell on Father and Jesus and what he said and the, and the tree that gives energy and life, like the Bible says, the, the river of life, the water refreshes you like none other. If you dwell on these things, is that wrong? Oh, no, you didn't. No. 5.45 p.m. Okay, all right, it's back on. Oh, my goodness, 5.45 p.m. Well, anyway, uh, I'll look it up just in case. Because I know the Lord used to, I feel like, many of those numbers at least up until a point did me did have to do with what I was talking about okay the word is apathase apathase which means disobedient m persuasible not compliant disobedient and come to macious from comes uh, apathase from G1 as a negative particle and G3982 Again, disobedient. So let's try Hebrew 545. I, I need to go back and re-enlarge. I re, um, started my computer, and now it's little again. <laughs> I got to go back and make it bigger. Feminine noun in the specific sense of training. Brought up one time. Um, bringing up, nourishment, rearing, training, providing for, as a parent, you're providing for your children. The specific sense of training. Um, Esther had not yet shooed her kindred, nor her people, as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she was brought up with him. That was not telling people she was a Jew, which is what saved their life. Okay, so I hope I've made my point. I'm going to end it here. I will link the video if you want to go to the 3 minute 50 second mark and listen to a couple minutes to see what I'm talking about. You can if you want. But just know that I did not share those videos with you to say, hey, y'all go subscribe to his ministry and start following him. Because he is a prosperity preacher. And I'm not so sure the Lord is so happy with that because we're not supposed to have our mind on prosperity down here on earth. We are supposed to keep our mind on heavenly things. That's why I shared it. So I wanted to make that clear. All right. I think that's all I wanted to say. With that, I will say I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us, our devices, and our internet connections. And pray that this video will go up. I'm sure it will. I don't see why it wouldn't. But um, 
I love you all. God bless each and every one of you. And I will talk to you again later.